That's what it means. All beauty is making an opposite, and, every, and we want to put opposites together, the same opposites together in ourselves. That is what we learn. Aesthetic realism has encouraged the art in me, had me be interested in exploring new ideas and new techniques. It is the basis of my teaching. A principle I love and will be talking about this evening is Mr. Siegel's statement, all beauty is a making one of opposites, and the making one of opposites is what we are going after in ourselves. The opposites which have gone through my work are pride and modesty, or the imperial and the democratic. And who have I used to show this but no, none other than Napoleon Bonaparte? This is a subject still going on, seven de decades so far, a subject I keep digging into. It began when I drew this profile of Napoleon in my geography book when I was nine years old. <laughs> years later, as a GI in 1942 at Radio School Station in Pittsburgh, this photo was taken. That's me with my army buddies, second from the right, hamming it up with exactly the same pose. There are family stories of how, at the age of nine, I already could be something of a little emperor, who, passing a toy store with my parents, I would point to a toy in the store window and scream, get me that toy, or I'll throw a rock through that window. <laughs> this was the same boy who, only a few years later, became the class artist and a political lefty hoping for a kind of world and people. These two sides of me were very separate. I was very affected when I heard Mr. Siegel lecture on Napoleon in the early 1950s. I want to quote from one of these lectures. Quote, Napoleon felt deeply that all men had to do with each other, and the injustices of the past should be changed. On the one hand, we see in him a tremendous desire for democracy, and on the other, a tremendous ego, a tremendous desire for power. The, confu the confusions point to the confusions in us. We want to be welcomed by the masses, and yet we want to nourish our selfish soul." Unquote. I recognize myself in this description and it encouraged me to continue my ideas and do new work, new work, some of which I'll show. What you're going to see first are some ink drawings done over the years from my sketchbook. Here, Napoleon is watching me as I work. <laughs> he represents the side of me that could be overbearing and give orders, and I wanted to include that aspect of me in my work. Now I'm pointing, I'm pointing to him as if I'm saying, don't worry, I'm including you. <laughs> and the third one is, a darksome covenant emperor carries a nice, lively, critical elf on his extended arm. And if you look at his arm to the left, that little being He's really pretty nice, <laughs> and he's trying to cheer up Napoleon. And then in this lithograph, Napoleon is standing on the windowsill, helping me to relate my work inside the studio to the outside world. In the 1950s, Mr. Siegel conducted art inquiries. The depth of the discussions that took place 
encourage the artist to understand more and more deeply what their work was about and what their intentions was. I go back pretty often these days to notes of those discussions, even now, to learn more about what I am doing. And I found that this was not just an obsession. It mattered very much to me. I brought this 1957 Aquitan to an inquiry because I wanted to understand better what was impelling me about Napoleon. Mr. Siegel asked me what my intention was in this work. And I said, I call this print Napoleon Entering New York at Night. I wanted to bring past and present together. So I have a young boy leading Napoleon on a steer. Then he asked, what makes this idea graphic? Philosophers have said the moment is lighted up and the future and past are not so lighted up. A paradox here is that a person not known to history is given the spotlight more than a character perhaps as well known as history in history as anyone. We have modesty triumphant over celebrity. I saw that I was dealing in this work with the desire to be both imperious and humble. This art inquiry inspired me to see Napoleon in new ways and in more places. This etching is Napoleon entering Coney Island. <laughs> That's him on the horse, and you can see the Ferris wheel there and the loop-de-loop. -loop. In this early state, he's on his horse, separate from the crowd, and he and the crowd both seem to be looking each other over. I loved going to Coney Island, the beach every summer and being one of the crowd of two million on a hot summer's day. But I also felt apart, somewhat separate and even superior to the crowd of humanity. After all, I was an artist. I now see I, I was related in these feelings to everyone else on that beach. I saw another possibility. This is that work in its final state. Napoleon has joined the crowd. We have modesty triumphant over celebrity. I learned that what I had wanted to do as an artist, which was to see that what I had, I had to do as a person, a husband, put opposites together. In a class once, I said I was troubled because like Napoleon, I like being lofty and giving orders to people, including to my wife, Dorothy, even as we painted in the same studio. Mr. Siegel asked, do you believe you are in a fight between seeing and controlling? He suggested I have as my conscious purpose the desire to see a person from within. Say for five minutes, he said, you try to see who a person is. That in itself opposes the desire to manage, to control. As I felt kinder as a person, it affected my work. This is a hand-colored etching, Napoleon's, Napoleon and Friends. Actually, it's Napoleon's and Friends. You'll notice there are a number of Napoleons here in the gray hats. If you look closely, you'll see them. I think there are at least eight Napoleons here. When, per when persons see there are other little emperors and emperors around, and they're romping with all sorts of friendly wild animals, it helps us see and laugh at that snobbism in ourselves. Napoleons on Alligators of 1970 may be my favorite. The high and mighty are comfortably riding the lowest and most primitive of beings. And the alligators also feel they're doing useful work, and they do have a sort of a nice look. <laughs> and my series continues, because the opposites continue always. 
I'm so glad that his ideas will get a, go across the Atlantic and reach the Italian people because they're very important ideas. But yet it's because of the thought behind it, you feel all these ideas really work. You really don't see Napoleon in Coney Island. He was never there. But in Haim Koppelman's work, he's in Coney Island, and he's with the masses of people. And he brings together the two sides in Napoleon, that desire to be so important and powerful. And then there's a side in Napoleon that wants to be fair to people, democracy for everybody, fair share. He wanted to do away with royalty and have everybody have the same rights. And he learned about these opposites in Napoleon, and these opposites are in me. You know, I want to make films that are fair to the world, do justice, and then there's another side that wants to be important, the big film, filmmaker, the, the Fellini of... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and how it's, it's not easy for people to put those opposites together. But through aesthetic realism, one can really learn, and it makes for more composure and greater kindness in the self. This is a first for me. I've, I've not seen his work, and I'm amazed by it. Totally amazed. It's, it's wonderful, and uh, I, I don't think I will ever forget just what I've seen today.